ya. Welcome to LSB Feasters Radio Air Check Channel, where we keep great radio from the past alive. And today we're going to New York and 66 WNBC for an air check with Howard Stern. Yeah, back in the 1980s, a lot of AM music stations were pretty much dying or already dead. But 66 WNBC was doing pretty well, playing the hits mainly because of their high personalities on the air. Big names that were very entertaining, like Don Imus, Soupy Sales, Alan Combs, Joey Reynolds, Wolfman Jack, and of course, the one and only Howard Stern. Stern was on WNBC for only three years, that's it. But during that time, he created Must Listen to Radio for New Yorkers who were headed home. Stern and his annex became very popular in Afternoon Drive throughout his three years at WNBC. But during that time, Stern was doing a lot of headbutting with management, programming, and some of the other jocks on the station, mainly Don Imus and program director Kevin Matheny, who Stern nicknamed Pig Virus on the air. Uh, many of these conflicts were dramatized in Stern's autobiographical book and film, Private Parts. On September 30th, 1985, Howard Stern was abruptly fired from WNBC, supposedly due to pressure from NBC corporate. After a little bit of time on the beach, Howard got a new gig doing the afternoon show across town on WXRK 92.3 K-Rock, and eventually he moved from afternoons to mornings, replacing Jay Thomas, who was the morning man. Hey, give this a listen. If you've never heard Stern on NBC, it's really an interesting listen. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to the channel. And if you have any old WNBC air checks lying around your house or any air checks at all, we would love to showcase them here. Just let me know down in the comments below. I got to thank Charles Hallett for this air check of Howard Stern on 66 WNBC, New York. Uh, my next guest tonight has described himself. He's described himself this way as the worst disc jockey in radio. He has the afternoon dive, drive time show here at WNBC AM. And uh, for my money, this man represents state-of-the-art radio. Please welcome Howard Stern. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you, David. Nice to see you, too. <laughs> like he says, nice to see you, sir. Like he had respect. I know. Hey, you got that thing on tape, the uh, Letterman appearance? Hey, let's hear some of it. This is me on Letterman. All right. I loaded the place with my people. No, no. Uh, this, is, uh, this is good. These this, folks This are... crowd is... Uh, these are people who like me. Yeah. <laughs> is there anybody who hates me here? Yeah! <laughs> Which good morning, everybody. There's all kinds of scum out there who hate me. <laughs> See, we, we were going to have them in sections. People who loved Howard and people who hated Howard, but they obviously all love you. Let me ask you about this. You describe yourself as the world's worst disc jockey. Well, I'm not a good disc jockey. I'm not like the guys on FM who tell you the weather every ten minutes. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of strange on the radio, and I'm not a good disc jockey. I don't play records, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Well, now, why is that? Why See, here, here, I was, here I was getting a little nervous because I thought he was going to be serious. Yeah. But here I, here I turned it around, I think. Thank he, goodness. He says, Letterman says, well, why don't you play the records that NBC, you know, on NBC? And I say... Because I, I basically hate the music that NBC plays. <laughs> the, station was, uh, the station was in the toilet bowl before I got there, and if I continued to play the music that they played, it would have been probably dead last in the ratings. Uh, now, now, what kind of music do they play and did they play? Uh, you know, Boy George. Which I, you know, for my money, I, you know, I can't deal with that. And they play uh, <laughs> Julio, Julio Iglesias and Willie Nelson. Yeah. Did anybody actually buy that record? It's like number five or something. Oh, what a comatose audience. <laughs> Stay totally gonna... relaxed, ultimate prof consummate professional. Handling every aspect of uh, everything that's going on, yeah. Yeah. What else was a good moment in there? Oh, I like the moment where you told him he should stack the uh, place with lesbians. Oh, yeah. Fast forward there, Bruce. Let us hear, hear you fast forwarding, too. Pretty well here tonight. So, uh... Uh, Howard, tell folks who have not, uh, don't have the benefit of uh, living in this area to hear your show what, what they would hear. You don't play music, so what do you do? Well, it's been I think it's further... Uh, I think it's back. Is it further No, up? it's near where he goes to commercial, so it's near that, uh... Dog. <laughs> you pack, just this. pack the show. Oh, yeah, 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 back, oh, yeah. back it up just back a little Back it up bit. a little, Bruce. This is where shock I... people. And I don't intentionally go out That's to... That's good. Well, okay, I do intentionally shock them because I know... 
if I don't, I won't have an audience. Mm -hmm. And we do a lesbian dial a date where we set up lesbians. I'm kind of like Jim Lang Jr. <laughs> I like to think of myself as that. And just uh, pack the show with lesbians. Something you ought to try. <laughs> Yeah, I was serious. <laughs> and there are lesbian dogs. You pack, they just pack the show with lesbians. <laughs> yeah, we pack right. the show with lesbians. Okay. It works, though. People like to see lesbians for some reason. I don't know. Like uh, Donahue or any of the... When you were on in the morning, you didn't have any lesbians. You were just, you know... Mm, did you have lesbians? I'm not sure. No. <laughs> Probably a few lesbians. Are we, are, we, are we close to it? All right. Well, uh, quickly, Howard, uh, mention how you opened the dial date that I heard that one time. I well, just... I no, was, no, no. That's see, enough. Me... Yeah. That was pretty good. That was great. All right. See, but the next time I go on, I want to just, like, do some wacky stuff. Yeah. You know. And I probably will be back on. I think so, Howard. I'm better than 90% of the guests that get on there. He'd be foolish not to call you back. Yeah. Anyway, when we come back, we're going to uh, talk to you on the phone. Also, we have here uh, Morty Gandhi. Hello, India. Yes. How are you, Morty? How are you again? Morty is uh, uh, India's number one stand-up comic. Top comic. Yeah. And, we, true. And, we are, true. and we are very proud to have him here, and he'll be doing some material for Make you. Make your move to Maxon. Move to Maxon. Maxon's got your ticket to ride, and it's hot. That's right. The only thing more disappointing than not being able to find the car you want is finding the car you want costs a lot more than you want to pay. Bags from Pontiac Honda Route 22 in West Union. They don't think you should be forced to drive a smaller, older, or more sparsely equipped car than you want. So Maxon has spent about 15 million. Gandhi, India's number one stand-up comic. Good to have you here, Morty. It's nice to be here. You know, when we take out the garbage in India, we do it mentally. Perhaps you've heard of transcendental sanitation. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you, it's great to be here. It's great to have you here. Nice to be here too. What did the Indian leper say in the fancy restaurant? What did the Indian leper say in the fancy restaurant? Could I have another thing to say? You know, I didn't see the new movie about the top dancing leper. Footloose. <laughs> <laughs> like loose? I don't know. <laughs> He's falling apart. Well, tell me, uh, <laughs> what else goes on in India? I'll tell you, in my neighborhood was so poor, we were the richest people on the block. And we had nothing. <laughs> <laughs> God, he no, no wonder he is the Bob Hope yes. of India. Oh, uh, yes, I hope so, anyway. <laughs> you can, how can you tell the bride at the Bangladesh wedding? How? He's the one lying next to the groom. <laughs> oh, my God, what am I saying? <laughs> no, I'm telling you, it was very tough in India. In school, though, everyone behaved because we never had food fights. We had no food. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I said to the Matarichi? Hey, Yogi, hey, Yogi, <laughs> hey, Boo Boo. <laughs> yeah, so. I love rock and roll, put another dime in the jukebox, baby. You know, that's the that's music. That's beautiful. I'll tell you, over here you have meatloaf, over there we have vegetable loaf. We don't eat meat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, yes. <laughs> that's about it, baby. <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> Morty Gandhi. <laughs> Tough growing up in India, I guess. Oh, very tough, yeah. Why do you wear that dot in the middle of your head? What does that mean? That's uh, period, the end of the whole bit. Because <laughs> 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 oh, I, I always see women wearing the dots on their head. Yes, they do that. It's, uh, it's a crazy custom, you know. It's uh, People wear the dots on their head. What can I tell you? <laughs> They're Indian. <laughs> and why do they call their robes sorry? Yeah, why do they call the robes? Because if you had to wear those clothes, you'd be sorry too. <laughs> Uh, Morty Gandhi. It's rags, it's rags. Yeah. You put a towel on your head, you're a happy man. <laughs> what about, I mean, it, it must be so crowded in here. All the people, the cows, the people, the cows, the people, the cows. You ever get tired of it? No, I get tired of the people, but not the cows. <laughs> But Cows say, are some of my best audiences. But they say, because, they say you people eat dogs over there because you get so hungry. You right? don't eat dogs over here? No, we don't. Oh, it's a shame. They're very good. They're very good? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Oh, Hello. Hi. Now, All Morty right. Gundy could do a great imitation of Kermit the Frog if he wanted to. Yeah, Morty Gundy. <laughs> Morty Gandhi is a true, a true star. He is wonderful. And, uh, you were terrific on Letterman last night. Thank you, Beth. You know, you were so good that this morning Imus called Roz just to ask about it. Yeah. I think he's worried that the throne is shaking. Pardon me, is shaking. Hmm. No, 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 no. I don't think so. He did call her. 
and she said that she didn't... Well, he's been calling her every morning. Yes. I guess he's having a good time on his vacation. <laughs> <laughs> he's calling some... You sure he didn't go to the Bronx or something? No, he went out to uh, St. Martin. Yeah. But he'll be back on... Uh... On Tuesday. Is anyway, right? I have a joke. Are you still playing Stump the Celebrities? Yes, yeah, Stump the Comedians. Go ahead. Morty Gandhi is here. Mr. Haney from Green Acres is here. Jackie Martling and Dave Walrus Hawthorne. we got a whole Terrific. group of people here. Okay, yeah. why did Poland just buy 5,000 septic tanks? Why did Poland just buy 5,000 septic tanks? Yeah. They want to invade. Who? Who? <laughs> they want to invade the United States. Russia. I don't Russia. Know. Well, that was kind of it. As soon as they figure out how to drive them, they want to invade Russia. I see. So do you think, well, I'll give you tickets. Yeah, to give her highlight, highlight tickets. Yay. Punishment. <laughs> it's your punishment for just calling with a dumb yeah, joke. It's really a joke like that. You have to go see me give away a Chevy Camaro at Milford oh, Highlight. No. <laughs> That's your punishment. Hold on. Thank you. You're on the air. Hello, Howie. Yeah, but How you doing? I wanted to tell you you were super last night on the Letterman show. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, Howie. No, it's Joe. Joe? Yeah, Joe Mammy. <laughs> Joe Mama? Big dummy. Hello, Howard. Like they don't know who it is. Yeah, who'd you call? Yeah. Joe. 19 past 6 o'clock, WNBC. Oh, no, no, not this. Forget it. Joe Mammy. I hate that song. We play such little music, you gotta play something good when we... Ah, here you go. The Rolling Stones at WNBC. You're an embarrassment. You know uh, Jackie Martling, Dave Walrus Hawthorne, and of course uh, you know Morty Gandhi, the uh, Indian. Uh, yes, how are you? Nice to meet you. Very Morty good. Gandhi, of course, the Indian. Uh, He's India's Bob Hope. Yes, yeah, I'm an yeah. Indian comedian. Yes. The By the way, uh, you were just telling me about some of the restaurants over in India. Yes, there's an excellent restaurant called the Beefsteak Gandhi. <laughs> Beefsteak Gandhi? Yes, and everyone asks, they go in, they go, where's the beef? Where's the beef? <laughs> well, we only serve buns because buns are not sacred, but cows are. That's right. <laughs> That's very very yeah. Morty Gandhi yes. is here. They have beautiful music mm. there. We have a great band. The Sacred Cow Sills play every week. Sacred Cow Sills. Very big. Very big. <laughs> and Morty Gandhi with yeah, us. Yeah, so, Steve, uh, did you well, see me on Letterman? What a hit you were on Letterman. I had to beg him to put you on, but I'll tell you. <laughs> Bill beg to have you on now, I'll tell you that. As big as you One, did. One fifteen. my phone rings last night. Steve Rossi. Oh, I'm laying in bed here with my wife. For a change? Yeah. <laughs> First time he's been in bed with his wife in a month. <laughs> My little wife, Elaine, she loved you. She Did loved she? you, and I, I thought you were sensational. Is she show. going to dinner with us tonight? She sure is. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I bought... She I wants brought, to meet my girlfriend, Robin. I brought a change of clothes, because you can't wear jeans there, right? Huh? Uh, it'd be better if you had a change yeah, of clothes. Yeah, I got a change of clothes. <laughs> He's looking at me like I'm scum. <laughs> So what are we doing, La Camille? Are you going to be, like, ordering off the menu, or are you going to have the, uh... Well, Luciano, who is the uh, owner of La Camille, he's going to prepare the, uh, the dinner himself. <laughs> <with> Carlos, <laughs> who is his partner. Carlos? Oh, yeah. And Luciano? But you, know, though, you haven't had food there yet. That's the best restaurant in Italian rest, I think. Not only in New York, in the country. Mm, there you go. Whoa. Hey. Now, they should be giving us a free dinner tonight for this kind oh, of plan. Well, no, I still got to pay, but it's worth it. <laughs> what kind of money do you... You must have raked in a fortune, man. You got... You must have, like... Well, you're the always first time around with Marty, uh, we made several million... Uh, God bless and, you. And it's amazing because... <clears throat> I just, you know, I started out without a quarter, and now I owe the government six million dollars. It's, it's tremendous. You made it. It's tremendous. Really made it. Oh my God. But the uh, shot on Letterman looked good. Oh, are you kidding? I'm, I spoke to about 50, 60 people around the country. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Uh, in the last since last night. Go ahead. And they, they, no, it wasn't. Are you kidding? Yeah. What they they say? They, they flipped over you. They think you're great. And I can't wait mean? to get back now to bring the tape because we may not even have to make a pilot. After they see what you did on that show. Thank you. And I think I'm going to be a regular on Letterman, kind of like no Dodie Goodman about it. from the Jack Parr show. Yeah. You Hi. look like Dodie, so there's no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think I look good on TV? You look great. Since you lost weight. I look better. Now, when you get down to my weight, where you really look great, then you're really going to... And anyway. Marty lost a lot of weight. Did he? Yeah. And did he get married yet? He's getting married June 17th, Sydney and Sheldon's house in Beverly a, Hills. He's marrying a Katie young girl. Katie Blackwell, who... Well, she's, she How certainly old? is young. 
Uh, if Marty's listening, about 22. <laughs> if Katie's now, how listening. How old is Katie? About, what, 30? She, I would say she's in her early 30s, probably. And Marty's got to be at least 70. No, no. Whoa. Marty just celebrated his uh, 53rd birthday. I'm just birthday. kidding. Again. Same age as me. Of course Again. he's 53. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's my birthday this month. Of course Marty is 53. Friday is my birthday. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. 52. That's right. But you were and God bless you, you look marvelous. Yeah, you oh, there's no question about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. And the gold chains, like they don't make you look old at all. No, especially the earrings. I love the earrings. Yes. You know. But Boy, you were terrific. Steve. No. Well, thank you. I'll tell you what, let's break me. for the end copter. Yeah. We'll come back and we'll compliment me some more. Okay, oh. right up. Steve Rossi has a lot of points to make, so I don't want to cut him off. Well, that girl that came on after you, she really antagonized it. Uh, the audience, because they loved you so much. And then she came out and said, what, is he kidding? He's let's garbage. Let's you talk know, about no the good. TV pilot. Over dinner tonight, are we going to be talking business? Absolutely. Television pilot. Hey, is it okay uh, that I invited Earth Dog Friday? I didn't know if you invited him. Absolutely. He was kind of hurt. Please. Are you kidding? Our producer. The scene is you're a mi- <laughs> he's a producer. Right? You Absolutely. got jeans? It's all right. Don't worry about the jeans. Don't worry about that. We'll put you in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we're doing this La Camellia thing, and then Luciano's going to order the whole dinner? Luciano is, is taking care of the whole thing. Are we going to talk business, or are we just going to shoot no the bull? No business. business. Are we going to talk about the TV pilot? We how are we going to do it? How are we going to do it? Right. Never mind how we're going to do it. you got to do it. you got to get us a TV no, pilot. No, no, no. The, the format of the show, the, we will do the pilot. Oh, that's set. Oh, that's set. Heritage Productions out in California. Definitely. These guys are reputable? They're reputable people. <laughs> They're not like you. They got film in the camera? <laughs> yeah. They have film, By the way, money. As my first guest, of course, Alan and Rossi. But wait, a, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, well, Robin is... Come a, on. A co- the no, 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 no. We have to talk about... Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Let me just talk to you about something. Oh, yeah, certainly. <laughs> I want to get this straight right away. Yeah. When we shoot the TV pilot, mm-hmm. and you know I love Alan and Rossi, the funniest comedy team. That's true. <laughs> Yay. Okay, let's just see here. Yeah, just... Alan and Rossi can't be on every show. No, no. no. Absolutely. And neither can you. <laughs> oh, wait a second. No, no, no. I'm just saying that, you know, Alan and Rossi can come in, but you guys just can't walk on every night. No, no. We all just right, want to come right. on to give you ratings. All right, fine. Like we do here on radio. And also, I want to have my good friend, Mr. Haney. Yes, Absolutely. I'd love to be on there and give you some ratings, too. You remember yeah, Mr. I want to tell you, it's just you, young fella. <laughs> you remember Mr. Haney from Green Acres? Yeah, he was great. He Thank you very much. And he much. is funny, too. I love that Gandhi character. Thank you very much. He's a friend of mine, too, Morty Gandhi. I love Gandhi. Gandhi. Yeah, I thought he was hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, let's play a song. We'll come back. Well, science girl? Yeah. Oh, you are? Yeah. And all your friends are making fun of you because you don't have a date for the prom? I don't have any friends. What are you Aww. talking about? You don't have any friends? One or two, but I wouldn't consider them friends because they're, no one even speaks to them. Yeah, is, this like gonna be, is this going to be all right with your mommy and daddy? Yeah. Did you ask their permission? Uh-huh. And what did they say? They said, fine. They said you could use a date. It was so unimportant. They said, your parents said you're unimportant? There no, they important. said I could use a date with someone important like you. The word is important, honey. Not important. <laughs> See, that's why she needs the date. Yeah, good Lord. No wonder no one's going out. You're going to speak right. <laughs> <laughs> that's not really important. Don't make <laughs> What? Don't serious. make fun of me, too. Oh. No, no, no. oh, we're not making fun of you. Come on, just relax. I'm really considering taking you out. I think Thank you. you. Should, I said I'm considering it. Don't get all happy yet. Okay, I'm not getting happy, but at least you put some light in my heart. Really, you should know all the troubles I have, really. Well, what are some of your troubles? My grandmother's tummy ill. She could go at any moment. Ooh. No, that's, that's, she's old, though. That's the thing. Yeah. You know, that's she lived a long life. She lived a long life, you know. Huh? What? My other grandmother passed away over the summer. Well, that's nothing. I got two dead grandmothers. <laughs> I got your beat there. I'm just a, I never even I'm met my grandmother. What? I'm just a kid. What do you want? How old are you again? Sixteen. The biggest crybaby I ever I heard. Know. All right, yeah, so what it... What else is not going for you? Well, my schoolwork, for one thing, it's not that hot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are parents you, divorced? What? Are your parents divorced? No. Oh. Uh, you don't have it so rough. <laughs> Why? A lot of kids get parents who are divorced, but it doesn't affect them. All right, I'll tell you, what. when is your prom? June 25th. What, what is day a, is that? What is that? Saturday? Yeah. Oh. No, wait, no, it's not Saturday. What is it? It's Monday evening. Oh, it's Monday. Oh, I guess wow. we could do that. Yeah. Starts like 8.30 or something. Well, you made her happy just by talking to this. Like, I think you're happy enough. Girl. You calm down now. I don't think I have to really take oh. you. 
You know how long I've been waiting on the phone to speak to you? I've been trying every day, and I've been waiting here, having the phone ring for the past hour and a half. You want to take her? Yeah. Well, wait a second. <laughs> oh, I don't want to go. Stand her up. <laughs> yeah. We'll agree to go, and then we'll Not stand her up. Problem. Push her off the cliff. What do you got to get? A, do we have to wear a tuxedo? I don't know. She does. <laughs> <laughs> and she has oh, to shave wait. that night, too. No. <laughs> mm. She oh, like she's crying. crying. How would we got to take her? Are you going to cry that night? None of you take me. Oh, oh I can't stand it. we oh, got to take her. Find out what she hours. looks like. How what do you look like? Um, I'm sort of chubby, but... <laughs> oh, forget about it. Quiet, Jackie. <laughs> Shay, quiet hey, down. A Get a Winnebago. You know. yeah. so Jackie, I, mean, I don't know what's, yeah, what what's hanging over about? your belly. Yeah. Uh, We're for you, darling. All right, what did you say, honey? Not that much, but you want to know something that might be an advantage for you? <laughs> Do you want to hear? I don't know what she's talking about. Well, she's young. Oh, she you have a fat be... belly? No, well, I'm um, slightly chubby. I could stand to lose five pounds or so. How tall are you? What? How tall are you? Five, three. How much do you weigh? About, <laughs> gosh, I don't know, but all I know is I have to lose. <laughs> you don't know what you weigh? No. Then Give me a rough estimate. Maybe 120 or so? Oh, that's not so bad. Yeah, you could, you know, you're not fat. Hmm. Well, what do you guys think? You're we my gotta take her. Robin said, what does my manager say? I think you should, really, because I don't. I can't stand to see uh, anybody uh, cry like that. Yeah. It's bad enough to hear my wife. Yeah, well, you're going to see me crying day. if we don't get that TV pilot. Oh, yeah, you're going to get it. That's right. I think you deserve it. You're the best comedian this world has ever seen. Not true. That Thank you, true. I even He's stayed up really late you. last night to see you on David Letterman, and my parents were really mad because even though they know I idolize you, they know that I should have studied for my test. What your name, your you last name uh, isn't Hinkley. You're not one of the Hinkley girls, no. are you? She sounds no. almost... <laughs> she's a little whiny, yeah. 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 She's, she sounds like she's authentic. Uh, Take yeah. me to the prom. Yeah. Mr. Haney, you make the final decision. You take this girl to the prom. I can't. I've got to go to another bar mitzvah for one of the uh, Ziffel brothers. I'm no, I don't sorry. Mean, I don't mean you personally. Should I take her to the prom? Take Arnold. It'd be the same thing as far as I'm concerned. I don't know. I don't know. Wait, so you're comparing this girl to Arnold the pig? Well, I think I already have done that, haven't I? <laughs> Wait a second. Mr. Haney is not a nice man. Howard, I'm sorry. I take Howard. that back. Why? I take it back. Howard, I'd even settle for Boy Lee. Oh, I know she how much you don't like him. Well, you are just... Who's going to take me to the prom? Oh, you okay, got we'll to. Huh? Mr. Haney, you make the decision. Howard, I'd take her to the prom. Oh, you got to. Mr. Haney, you make the decision. No. Oh, <laughs> Well, there it is. No, you can't There it is. That. No, you have no, to no, take me. No, no, we're going to make it out. She's... I don't think those are real tears. I'd be glad to take her. <laughs> Not you, Mr. Gandhi. Mr. Haney says no. Why does he say no? Why did you say no? Because I happen to know one of the Gabor sisters is free that evening, and I could hook it up for you, Howard. All right, well, thank you. Well, if Mr. Haney was the one who makes the decision, I guess I'm not taking you to the prom. Oh, she really is crying. Oh, wow. I might have said anything about this. <laughs> you want to see, see the tears in my nose? Oh, she's oh, a mess God. now. All right, all right. I just wanted to put you through a little head trip. I'm going to take you. I'm going to take you. Who's the best? Who's the, who's the best? Howard Stern. Yeah. <laughs> Now listen. Now this is there's a couple of things. We got well, tomorrow on the air. We're gonna call you back, Freddie. You take down our number. We have it already. We're gonna call your parents. We gotta make sure it's okay with them. Yeah. Okay. I don't. Um. What time do you think you might call? Because they might be at the hospital with my grandma. Oh, God. oh Jesus! This is this a pathetic girl? Or what? <laughs> what do they got her on a respirator? Your Daddy, grandma? I'm on the phone with Howard Stern. What do you got her on a respirator? My there? mommy's here. Oh, my so God. is my dad. Your dad and your mom is here? Yeah, if you want to speak to him about going to the prom with me, you can. All right, let me speak to your dad. <laughs> okay. Hello? Uh, uh, hello, sir. Uh, this is Howard Stern. You're on the air. How are you? Fine, thank you. Oh, boy, your daughter sounds pretty upset. Well, uh, she uh, felt that she wanted to have you go with her to the prom and... Now, have you ever heard my show? Yes. You have? Yes. You, you know what a disgusting human being I am. Uh, well, I wouldn't say that. You like me? I think you're a, a good radio person, yes. So you will let me take your daughter? Uh, yes, you can accompany her. 
All right, put your daughter back on. Okay, hold on. Hello, Howard. All right, I'll take you. Oh, thank you. Oh, you made a little girl very happy, Howard. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, Lord, you whined enough. <laughs> and don't whine on a date. I'm sorry, I won't. It's not a All date, right. it's a prom. Well, whatever. Who's your hero? Howard Stern. All right, who's the best guy in the whole world? Howard Stern. Who do you idolize more than God? Howard Stern. Fine. <laughs> Who is your savior? Howard Stern. Whose hands will you kiss? Howard Stern. There you go. Who do you pray to at night? Yeah, who do you say your prayers to at night when you kneel down in front of your little bed? Howard Stern. Oh. That's it. Who has answered your prayers? Howard Stern. That's it. <laughs> Who has two more questions? <laughs> Let me tell you something. At least I make your dreams come true. You sure do, you Mr. Stern. You know when you... Pr That's a good touch. Mm. You know... Yeah. Respect. Good when you... No curtain rod for her. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to call you... I'm going to call you up tomorrow, and uh, we'll discuss this further. Okay, thank you. All right, the crying was nice. <laughs> yes, that was nice. good. It's good. All right. We'll talk to you tomorrow. We're going to your prom. We'll make some plans. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate this. You've made me the happiest girl on earth. Just on earth? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Isn't that enough, Howard? All right. <laughs> All right, you're going to the prom. Thank you. All right, so tell the, tell the scum you go to school with that. Howard Stern is coming. You got a date. Yeah. You got a date, babe. I'll see you later. Okay. All right, honey. Bye-bye. Love you. Sweet little girl. Love you, too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Let's play some commercials and get out of here.